help him, like condolences to his family, because I'm sure that's a tough pill to swallow. You know, I reached out to his cousin this morning because her and I are cool. Brandon, whatever the situation is with him, I like her, you know? And so I said, this has to be difficult for their family. And I just wanted her to know, like, you guys are in my thoughts and my prayers and I'm, I'm sending you love. But, you know, I it, for me, it was like, okay, so now you have Skyline, you, you have Scammer, like, we gotta, we gotta switch the trajectory here, you know? And that's why I'm like, I'm about to get the stage out. Like, I don't, you know? And like, yeah. I like somebody I really like, but I'm just really trying to like, take it super, so when I say like turtle slow, I'm just scared of everything, you know what I mean? But, so, but can I tell you, Jen, um, and people who don't know you, your heart is so pure and I have always just admired how vulnerable you are and how open, I said this to you, recently like how you remain open to love and I know that it's not always easy to find but I think that that's part of the challenge for us as black women is that we force our we're forced in many ways to have to put on this armor and be so strong because of the attacks because of the the lies because people don't show up and you know demonstrate who they really should be or who they say they are to us and demonstrate something different. Hey, what's up, guys? I wanted to have a conversation quickly about Jennifer Williams. And she's come out recently talking about Tim Norman of Sweetie Pies, who is her ex-boyfriend, and the charges that have been placed against him in the plot to allegedly take out his nephew, Andre. And he is detained he's still detained at this point he has not been released i don't believe that he will be on any bond but she's coming out and she's stating about how she wasn't really believed by people and she's on this you know the streak that's going on right now about how black women are unprotected and how black women are you know, the most unprotected group and how a lot of times we're not believed when we claim things. But I don't, in this situation, believe that Jennifer Williams should be talking about the general public in this situation because it is true that she did have a relationship with Tim Norman and that it is also true that they broke up and that she did allege some things about him. I don't really think that people came out and just had this full-fledged, we don't believe you, Jennifer bandwagon thing going on. But yeah, of course, there were some people who were on his side and who believed him. And there were some people that were on her side who believed her. Just period. Just generally because of people who were more prone to know Tim and people who were more prone to know her. She did on one of the seasons of Basketball Wives reconnect with Evelyn Lozada and Evelyn Lozada actually went to court with her in regards to this situation and you know she talked about it a good bit and to be honest with you on that season whatever season that was of Basketball Wives that was more of her storyline during that season about the the past relationship that she had with him and how he was not a good person and that she was afraid of him and how she was trying to get this restraining order against him claiming that he was stalking her and you know that he was pretty violent and i did watch the sweetie pie show and i also used to watch some of the seasons of basketball wise but i do remember when 
Tim Norman opened up the Sweetie Pies location in Los Angeles, not very long into the season, he was stating that he was dating someone new and then it turned out to be Jennifer Williams. Now, to be honest with you, I thought it was a bit odd because Jennifer Williams is, she's, she's a very, you know, pretty, she's a very pretty woman. She is. Tim Norman, you know, not saying he's the most unattractive person out there, but he definitely is a bit odd shaped and he didn't seem to be her type in terms of the fit of who he is. But because he was becoming more known through the television show, and he was obviously an entrepreneur opening up these different restaurant chains and clearly doing at that time doing well for himself. This was before his mom filed the lawsuits against him for copyright infringement and opening up all of these restaurants without her permission that she created. It's her business and her brand. Things were going, you know, pretty okay. But what I did notice was that Jennifer Williams was showcasing her business on the Sweetie Pie show. I believe it was an online clothing boutique. And Tim Norman had someone that he had fired from the business that he rehired. It was a young lady. I don't remember her name, but he lent this young lady to Jennifer to be her assistant to help her out in her business. I don't know what the financial arrangements were with that, if she was unpaid or if she was paid, but it was a bit weird. But her her business was showcased on the Welcome to Sweetie Pie show because of her connection and her relationship with Tim Norman at the time. Well, another season of Welcome to Sweetie Pies, Tim Norman's opened this restaurant location in Houston, Texas. And Jennifer Williams at the time was still dating him. Again, seemed like a an odd matchup, but I mean, love is blind. So you love who you love, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. And of course, it's not always about the the exterior looks and it shouldn't just be about the exterior looks. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm superficial with it comes to that. But I mean, let's be honest, Jennifer Williams and Tim Norman, it just did not seem like a, a legitimate matchup. But when it came to the money, I started to see that Jennifer was more, uh, let, let's say, more pressing in terms of getting the relationship to the next level because she started pressing him about looking at engagement rings and looking at houses. And this was all in the show. It's all documented. It's all out there. So, of course, we don't know what goes on behind closed doors in someone's home, in their bedroom, in their kitchen, in their bathroom, in their backyard. We don't know. We, you know, we only were privy to what was filmed. But Jennifer Williams, they... You know, they had this relationship that didn't end well. They broke it off and they were going through the motions in court with her filing a restraining order against him. He filing a restraining order against her. Well, back in 2018, the judge denied both of them restraining orders against each other. They both got shut down. And, you know, it was found that they both had no reason to grant the restraining orders against each other. And yes, yeah, she had the alleged um, things about him threatening her violently and different things like that. But they don't just give these things out of court. There has to be a legitimate reason. And she clearly didn't prove it. Neither did he prove it against her. So Jennifer Williams coming out now and making statements about not being believed by the public her gripe needs to be with the court, not with the public. It shouldn't be about her saying that we as the general population of black people, especially men, 
tend to not believe black women and black women are unprotected. No, sweetheart, the court didn't believe you. It wasn't the public, it was the court. The court could care less about the public's opinion of her. It was about what was presented to the courts to prove that she was she she should have been granted a restraining order against him. And clearly, even though the restraining order was not granted, nothing else happened after that between the two. And even with this situation that is so unfortunate with his nephew right now, we know that in the court of law, you're innocent until you're proven guilty. Yes, he was arrested on the charges because the charges were trumped up. I don't want to say trumped up, so forgive me. That's not what I meant. The charges were built up because of the the facts involved and the evidence that they had in order to prove that charges should be brought against him and he should be arrested on those charges. Now it's up to a jury to convict. And then if the jury convicts, then the judge will sentence. But I don't think it's right for her to come out now making these statements based on what Tim Norman was charged with in this separate situation that really has nothing to do with her. And she was claiming that he was violently threatening her. But yet with this situation, with regards to his nephew, this was all about money. And this was all about the guy was losing and failing in business. He saw this as an opportunity to come up financially and he had some other people to handle it allegedly he did not threaten his nephew and he did not pull the trigger he did not hurt his nephew physically he did something that is so horrible and just unthinkable and unfortunate but this was about money so I don't think that it's like apples and oranges. I don't think that she should compare her situation to what he's been alleged and charged with in the death of his nephew. It's two it's two totally different things. And I'm not saying that he didn't threaten her or he wasn't physically or verbally abusive towards her. I'm not denying what she's stating. I'm just saying that I don't think that it's right for her to use this situation to come out and speak about how black women are unprotected. And this is an example of a black woman being unprotected. I don't, I just think it's apples and oranges. It's not the same thing. And I just believe that it's a gripe that she should have taken up with the court and possibly filed an appeal or if she felt that unprotected and that threatened by him then she should have come with more to try to get an you know a restraining order against him at another point if that first attempt was denied just because the first attempt is you know was denied doesn't mean that she couldn't try again if it was that important if it was that scary of a situation to her so I just wanted to speak about that briefly because I just don't believe that the two can be compared even though some may say that yeah she has every right to come out and say what she's saying i'm not saying that again tim norman was not verbally physically mentally whatever abusive towards her that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying that i don't believe that she should use this situation to make it about her and that's really the gist of what i'm saying in this whole conversation i don't believe that she should use this situation to make it about her and to make it about how black women are unprotected because it's apples and oranges. It's really not the same thing, but that's just my opinion. So I would love to know what you guys think about it in the comment section. Feel free to share your thoughts respectfully. I appreciate you supporting the channel by clicking the links in the description box. And I hope you enjoyed the conversation by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. This is the Minister of Beauty sharing the Bible that's business, inspiration, beauty, life, and enjoyment. Until next time, have an amazingly blessed and beautiful day.